In lecture 14, we continue with resonance with the subject of benzene rings. While benzene itself is toxic to the human body, the benzene ring with substitution occurs all through organic life as a part of many amino acids. If students were asked to draw a benzene ring, a portion of the students would draw the six-membered ring and then to add the bonds between the carbons, they might go with a double bond, single bond, double bond arrangement. But another portion of the students would draw the structure with the double bond on the left side instead of on the right side. Now, hopefully at this point, you realize that if you can draw structures on paper that seem to be very similar in formal charge and are related just by rotation, these would be equivalent resonant structures. They are interconvertible by electron movement. So if we just slide that double bond to between these carbons, of course, that would give this carbon five bonds. So we'll have to kick that double bond over and then kick that double bond over. And we will be at this structure. Or we can convert the structure on the right to the structure on the left. Or we can compare formal charges and see that both structures have six carbons with a formal charge of zero and six hydrogens with a formal charge of zero as well. Or those of you who are good at rotating molecules in your head may realize that if you take this center axis and rotate by 60 degrees, you wind up with this compound. So it's improper to say that the double bond is localized between just two carbons around the benzene ring. It's more that the double bond is delocalized and the electrons in the double bond are allowed to range all throughout this six-membered ring. That is their electron cloud region. Now notice resonance is localized to just the carbon-carbon bonds. There is no change in these carbon-hydrogen single bonds. So this is what would be called localized delocalization. Yes, there truly is such a thing. And perhaps you remember seeing that before when you were getting the bond order of the carbonate ion. So the bond order for this benzene ring would be nine bonds within this six-membered ring, and of course, six bonding regions. So the bond order would be 1.5, which is what you would get if you averaged a double bond and a single bond. The next part of this lecture deals with hybridization. When you finish with hybridization, come on back and take a look at this, and you'll realize that the carbon has one unhybridized p orbital, and the combination of these p orbitals is what describes the electron cloud for the six electrons in those pi bonds. So a reminder of bond order and how it impacts changes between atoms in a molecule. Within a series of bonds between the same atoms, the higher the bond order, the shorter the bond, the stronger the bond, and the higher the bond energy. The bond order of a carbon-carbon bond has been presented before as bond order 1, with 1.54 angstroms of distance between the two carbon atoms, with 1.54 angstroms of difference between the carbon nuclei, and a bond energy of 347 kilojoules per mole to break that carbon-carbon bond. This structure has also been presented before with a double bond. You notice the carbon-carbon bond length is shorter at 1.33 angstroms, and the carbon-carbon bond energy is higher at 612 kilojoules per mole. Not double, but higher. For a benzene ring, the carbon-carbon bond order would be 1.5. The bond length would be the average of a single and a double bond, and the bond energy would be the average between a single and a double bond. 
So here is a compound that's much in the media. This is THC, and you notice that it does definitely have a benzene ring component to it. So we want to know what is the bond order of each labeled bond, and then rank them from shortest to longest. So let's look at bond A. Now, even though bond A is in a six-member ring, it doesn't have that double, single, double, single, double structure. So the bond order of A will be as it appears, bond order one. The same is true for B. It will be as it appears, bond order two. But when we go to bond order for C, notice that this is in a benzene ring structure. We have the hexagon, and we have double, single, double, single, double, single about the hexagon. So even though it appears to be a double bond, one has to recognize that it is the average of two static structures written on paper, and the bond order is 1.5. The same is true of D. The bond order is 1.5. So now, rank them from shortest to longest. Which has the shortest bond order? Bond order 1, 1.5, or 2? I sincerely hope that you say that bond order 2 is the shortest and the strongest. In the middle, we have bonds C and D, which are equal to one another in bond length and bond strength. And for our longest bond, we have bond A.